Welcome to a special episode of the New Thinking for a New World podcast series. This one focused on leadership. Today's world is short of a lot of things, hope, peace, prosperity, but what it lacks most is dynamic, innovative, global, values-based leadership. If we can find or nurture the right leaders, the rest will follow. Listen as Jan Eliasson, former Deputy Secretary General of the United Nation, talks about how great leaders can change everything. Jan, today we're going to talk about global leadership, but more particularly, we're going to talk about the Telberg SNF Eliasson Global Leadership Prize. What I'd like to start with a simple thank you. Six years ago, when I started talking to you about the notion of a prize and the need to recognize great leadership, you didn't hesitate a second to say, oh my God, yes, count me in. I will support you. I'll lend my name and my reputation to this effort. And on behalf of not just myself, but the board of the Telberg Foundation, thank you for that enthusiasm. Thank you for that support. I would like to say, thank you, we solved the problem but I'm afraid we need global leadership now more than ever. You, you live in that world. We all live in the world of, of the globe, but you live in that world of looking for global leadership. Are we, are we in as bad shape as I think we might be? Well, first of all, thank you very much, Alan, for your kind words. It was easy for me to accept your offer because I had been thinking for some time already six years ago that we need to think in terms of the kind of new leadership we need for uh, the future. We are stuck in old patterns and we are stuck in silos and we are stuck in conventional thinking. And uh, I was thinking that there is a need to uh, shake up this whole discussion and, uh, and discourse and bring in the, uh, the important reflection uh, and I think truth that we need to go much wider in terms of looking for leadership. Uh, I know from my life in politics and in diplomacy that you look for the lawyers and you look for the economists and so forth. But uh, with the problems we have today, let's look at uh, climate uh, change, uh, climate crisis to begin with, uh, and many other problems today, you need to bring in the natural sciences. We need to bring, look broader. We look out, we must have a, what I would call a horizontal approach uh, rather than a vertical approach. We, we can't solve problems in the silos. We got to put the problem in the center and then gather the people around that problem and then in the end reach some type of informal or even formal division of labor. So when you brought that out, I felt you were on the right track. And I see from these years of laureates, I get a big smile on my face. We are in the right direction. We have young people. We have people with very unconventional approaches to what they are doing. We are looking for innovative solutions. We go outside the box. And we see the uh, realities out there as complex. And then we need also to have leadership, which can grasp this. And maybe I should add also the need for people who can work in teams. I notice more and more in whatever area that you got a tremendous dynamics if you bring in the team from different areas around a problem, because then you, you don't get stuck in your conventional thinking in your silo. And I think this combination of uh, encouraging, as you do, and promoting uh, new thinking, promoting uh, unconventional solutions, looking for young people, women not least, which we need, who we need to, need to mobilize, and then bring them around the uh, table and have them meet. I, I will never forget, uh, for instance, the discussion we had in, uh, in New York uh, a day when traffic was completely stuck and we got in there in this room and then came this fantastic discussion among the laureates at that year, that time. It was one of the best discussions I've heard, <laughs> believe it or not, in my whole career. And same thing in Mexico. So uh, keep it up. Let's, uh, let's, uh, I see that you get many applications and you deserve to get them. Well, it is a Noah's Ark approach to leadership. It does say that you don't, you, you want some of everything on board because the only way to address these problems, as you've just said, Jan, is with different framing, with different experiences, with different models. Uh, because otherwise these global problems, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's climate, whether it's migration, um, we, we won't solve them, or we'll do as badly addressing them in the future as we have in the past. So this multidisciplinary, multi-country, multi-age, multi-everything approach, easier said, Noah's Ark, um, is, I think, one of the smart things we did as we thought we, you, me, the rest of the board, 
thought about how to design uh, how to design this this program. One of the things you touched on is important, and it's an innovation this year. Uh, we have decided that we're looking not just for well-established leaders, but for leaders that maybe are earlier in their arc of leadership. That they, they are accomplished already, they have a track record, but they're younger perhaps, but they certainly have more potential and less past. So this notion of making sure that the room, the table is occupied by not just people that have seen the movie many, many times, but people who are still learning how to make movies. So that emerging leader aspect to what we're doing, I think it will be an important innovation in, in 2021. I think you are right. And uh, I, I believe also it is important that we bring to the attention of business uh, leaders and leaders in organizations like uh, my own United Nations and Swedish Ministry of Foreign Affairs that they also should pick up this because they, sometimes these, uh, these organizations are very conservative in, in human, human resources policies. We need to make them understand uh, that this broader approach, bringing in uh, new energy from new directions is a very good thing for business, a very good thing for the vitality of the organizations. I notice now my foreign ministry is recruiting Muslims for the first time, second generation Iranians and Bosnians, <laughs> very successful. Uh, but I, in business, I think they still are looking for the economists and lawyers. They, we need them, my God, I say not, nothing different. But I think to bring in elements of other uh, disciplines uh, and other experiences uh, is a vitalizing element that is sorely needed. I believe in fact, the most uh, successful uh, enterprises and organizations will be those who really take advantage of diverse and uh, bringing that in that horizontal approach to solving problems. I couldn't agree more. In fact, I think too many businesses, too many corporations are still driving by looking in the rearview mirror, mm -hmm. pretending that what happened yesterday is the best predictor of what's going to happen tomorrow and trying to run their businesses that way. And what we know for sure is that it's not, mm -hmm. that we are at a kind of profound change. And if you're going to manage successfully through that change, um, you really do need to embrace what's going on. You need to get ahead of the curve. You need different kinds of people in the room. And it, it, it's diversity in its truest meaning. It's not, it is gender, it is race, it is background, it is experience, it is nationality. You can't cope with this global world unless you are also global. Yeah. And that's something that we really are trying to encourage, promote through the way we administer this prize. Yeah. And you know, of course, from looking back at history, that the, the most important changes come about through uh, innovation and from turning around the thinking and uh, behaving like the uh, little boy and the emperor without clothes, you know? asking the fundamental question, does he have any clothes on? I can tell you an example from my own diplomatic life. One of my, uh, I'm very proud of getting, first of all, I got stuck in Sudan on a ceasefire negotiation. The government wouldn't agree to a ceasefire because that was a political and military term. That would mean recognition of what they call the rebels, the terrorists of the South at the time. So I came back to my team in the evening and said, this won't work. Uh, we got to think anew. Anyway, you, I'm stuck. So we had a brainstorming and it ended up with, we concluded that we should, instead of asking for a ceasefire, we asked for a humanitarian corridor. Mm. And that was the difference. We helped every village in that area, which, which was threatened by starvation and death, by coming in there with helicopters and, and uh, airplanes from Kenya, helping everybody. And they didn't have to agree in, in a formal agreement between themselves. They made a commitment to the UN through me as responsible for humanitarian affairs. This is just to say that, well, you get stuck with one word and then you find another angle and the problem is solved. Actually words in this case saved lives. It's just that type of thinking that I think we need now in this enormously complex world and, and troubled world with people are sort of getting, feeling despair about finding solutions. So that's why we need those new elements coming into the uh, conventional decision-making processes. Let me add to that just one other innovation that we have, and it's in the name of the prize. We have added the 
SNF name to our prize, the Stavros Niarchos Foundation. And that reflects two things. One, it does reflect their financial support for the Telberg Foundation, but far more importantly, it reflects SNF's commitment to exactly the kind of thinking and change that you just described. Uh, the leadership of SNF is, is world-class, does understand that you need very practical solutions to problems, does understand that supporting new thinking, supporting new leadership is absolutely critical if we're going to get through this. And I, I was delighted because I can't imagine two words I'd rather have next to each other in the name of a prize than SNF and Eliason. And we managed to accomplish that this year. I'm pleased and I hope you are as well. I am indeed. No, I think we are on the right track. And uh, I hope this catches on because I think uh, if uh, organizations uh, and governments and international organizations pick up this new thinking uh, of looking for innovation, looking for youth, looking for those who are coming and are aspiring and who should be encouraged and uh, accept that we need diversity in everything we do. I think we will have a qualitative uh, leap forward. And if Telberry and you and uh, our organization can bring this about, I think we should be proud. And I'm very glad SNF is on board also. Without their financial support, we wouldn't be where we are. So uh, let's just uh, now hope that we, with the help of these fantastic laureates, can uh, send the message out and uh, that we will get as many followers as possible. First of all, as many applications as possible, but then very much setting examples for these organizations that so much need to go through this vitalization process. Well, thank you for that. Telberg has always been about conversation. It's always about getting different kinds of people together to talk through and imagine new solutions. Uh, and in the leadership space, one of the things we're trying to do with our little conversation today, and more generally with the nomination process, is to encourage people to think about leadership, to talk to others about leadership, and to nominate great leaders. Mm -hmm. And so I think as a consequence of this conversation, hopefully we get a spike in nominations. We will certainly get a spike in attention. And so thank you very much. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful spring. Same to you. And without the uh, pandemic uh, hanging over us with that dark cloud, uh, we, which we should plan for the post-COVID world. Uh, and uh, maybe this shock that we've lived through could give us a reason to think anew and uh, take a deep breath and uh, look in the direction that you and I have spelled out today. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> thank you very much, Jan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for listening. Now it's your turn. Tell us what you think. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or you can subscribe to our newsletter at telbergprize.org. Thanks again, and most importantly, don't forget to nominate a leader whose work deserves to be recognized and imitated. This podcast was brought to you through the generous support of SNF, the Stavros Niarchos Foundation.